We're again in 1 Timothy today in chapter 5. And uh, Paul, is, uh, as he writes to Timothy, Timothy is a pastor, a shepherd, a leader at the church of Ephesus, apparently the key leader there. Paul writes to him how the church should function. And we're so glad the uh, the Lord gave us these passages in 1 Timothy and Titus in particular concerning how the church is to function. Uh, these, are, I think, are the most important passages in all the Bible concerning the actual functioning of a local church. Uh, and one of the key discussions or items of uh, that needs to be dealt with is eldership or leadership in the local church. In chapter 3, he gives us the qualifications of elders, which is primarily spiritual in nature, although they must also understand and be able to teach the Word of God. But it's primarily characteristics of a godly person who is to have a position of leadership in the local church. He returns now in chapter 5 to elders, and uh, he's talking about uh, various issues in relationships to elders. Now, we would mention that elders uh, is one of the three titles given in the New Testament for the primary church leaders and of a local congregation. Yeah, there's one office, but three different uh, names for that office or titles. Elder is one of those, speaks of the, of the dignity of the task of someone who should have the spiritual qualifications to be over a congregation. They're not given this position because of their business ability, uh, their organizational skills, but because of the qualities that they have as, as men of God. Uh, they are to lead the church on the basis of those qualifications and also their ability to teach the word. Another word is used is, is usually translated overseers, which it tells us these are men who must lead uh, and give insight and oversight for the church itself as it goes forward. And every church needs that kind of leadership. The third word is the word pastor or shepherd. Uh, it could be the same word translated different ways at times. And it speaks of, of them just as what a shepherd does. A shepherd cares for the sheep. Uh, they love the sheep. They feed the sheep. Uh, it's not a dictatorial role. It's a shepherding role as, uh, as these pastors come alongside their people to encourage them in Christ. So that's what we're talking about here. When he says, the verse 17, the elders who lead well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor at preaching the word and teaching. So he's speaking of the uh, honor work due a elder, and he says uh, they're, they're considered worthy of double honor, especially if they are preaching the word and teaching. So this implies to us uh, that not all elders spent a lot of their time preaching and teaching. Uh, I think all had to be capable of teaching the word, but not all were were carved out to do that in particular. So there were some who we might call ruling elders, who uh, led the congregation, shepherded the congregation, uh, did various things in leading in the congregation, including the teaching of the word. But at the same time, there were others who dedicated themselves more to the actual preaching and teaching of the word of God. And concerning that second group, he says they're worthy of double honor. Uh, this might imply finances, paying the elders uh, uh, very generously because of what they do. Uh, maybe uh, it implies also just the uh, honor due them, the dignity due them, the respect due them by the congregation. Uh, I think I think if it's finances that the church should be taking care of their spiritual staff, their leadership in the best way they can. Some churches are able to be generous, others are not. It very much depends on the circumstance, but the attitude should be there. And also keeping in mind that, that no one should go into these kinds of ministries, eldership and pastors and whatever, for the purpose of getting wealthy. He'll talk about wealth later on in, this, in chapter 6. Uh, it's, it's not, we don't go into ministry of this type in order to get wealthy. And nevertheless, he speaks of this worthiness of the double honor for those who serve in this way. And he says in verse 18, For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle the ox while it's threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. And so he's simply saying that if you serve in a capacity as, as a leader of a church, if you're set aside financially to do so, then the church is obligated to take care in a, in a, in a good way, the way, best way they can, of the leadership of their church. Uh, he has more to say to, about elders I want to look at tomorrow.
And uh, we'll pick up on verse 19. And until we meet again, have a wonderful day in the Lord.